Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're going to turn a 30 minute pavement trip into a five hour off-road trip. We're starting out in Twin Lake, Michigan and heading to Shelby. We've had some pretty heavy storms recently with heavy winds causing trees to come down and knock out power for many of us. What could go wrong? What obstacles will we encounter? How many U-turns will we make? Being without power for a few days really makes me glad we're campers. We already had everything we needed. Power supply, fridge, lights, some creature comforts like fans that run off of a charge, solar lights. It was perfect time to do a trial run for our upcoming UP trip. If it weren't for some of our neighbors running generators 24-7, this would have been a great backyard camp. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad they had the ability to power their homes, but man are they noisy. Imagine your neighbor cutting their grass with that old beat up snapper lawnmower. Remember that sound? That's what we heard for 72 hours. The amount of generators that were going made backyard camping impossible. So we camped in the basement instead. It's 4th of July weekend, the weather is too cold to be out on the lake, and cleanup is still taking place in high impacted areas. So we're going to head north through the trails, see what lies in the Manistee Forest. past four years I've been learning and exploring our area and enjoying the luxury of trail access minutes away from home. Today I wanted to do something different. I wanted to blend some of the new and the old and see just how far we could get. Instead of guessing and just figuring out the lefts and the rights on the fly, this morning I built our route with Onyx. With the desktop version you can create your own route, linking or bypassing your map trails, adding new trails, and blending them together. rain we got from the storms, I'm very surprised that this isn't a muddy mess or rutted out to the point of forcing us to do bypasses or find another way. The strength of the Manistee Forest surprised us. I was expecting a lot of chainsaw workouts, but that really wasn't the case today. Sure we had to move some dead wood off the trail and trim some broken overhang, but overall this trip was moving along pretty smoothly, till we got to the flattest, sandiest part of the route, where the simplest looking two track decides to give Thunderbolt a run for his money. My son was driving because this is a favorite spot of mine for aerial shots with my drone. And I told him to hold up. Thanks DGI for the great updates. I've been having lost connection issues and it's been quite frustrating. There was a new update this morning and I was looking forward to see if the connection bug was fixed. Well, it wasn't. It's better, but it's just quite not there yet. So I told my son to stop so I could get everything situated and our West Michigan Sam decided to give us a challenge. Me not telling my son I left Thunderbolt to a drive didn't help much either. With a few back and forths and a locker engagement, we're back at it. Well, at least the Jeep was back at it. Me and the drone, we still had some bugs to work out. And we have to come to an agreement of who's flying who.
little group, we all have different rig setups, tire sizes, lifts, lockers, no lockers. Same with our drivers. We each have our own style. We may take different lines, see a path easier or harder than someone else does. But the best part is that we always look out for one another. Now in this section, Thunderbolt popped right up and over these roots. Cindy, who is an Oscar, stayed a little more to the left and made it with no problem. Now my wife chose a different line. And as you can see, didn't make it on the first pass. After seeing Red Hulk's lights in my mirror, shimmy and left, shimmy and right, bouncing up and down, kind of like he was doing a table dance. The anxiety was driving me nuts. I had to jump out to make sure my wife was okay. Yeah, that's me running. I jumped out to come spot for my wife only to find out that she didn't need it. She chose the right combination for her by moving a little to the left, getting that right front wheel, the climb, and bam, she did it. There's nothing better than being with a group of people out on the trails where everyone encourages one another, laughs together while taking in the sights and sounds of the outdoor. Before ending our adventure to grab dinner in Shelby, I wanted to save the best for last. So we ended on the famous Rock Road. Well, at least that's what it's nicknamed. It's actually Grant Road, and Google has no problem putting you on this road. It's an incline that is unmaintained, has some good sized boulders, down trees, some deep washouts, and the surrounding property owners will often let their dogs out to say hello at the sight of a Jeep. The last time we were here was a few months ago for my birthday run. The spring melt hadn't started yet, and much of it was covered in snow. So I had no idea what to expect, as this road changes every time you take it.
camera justice is a creator's biggest betrayer. On screen, you can look at this and say, really, this is your biggest climax moment of this video? Don't be fooled. It may not look like much, but line choice here can make a good day quickly turn into a bad one. I'm glad we approached this in the direction we did, because some of these holes could not be seen if we were coming down Rock Road. Like all of our trailing, we each approached this in slightly different ways. I was focused on how to traverse it with the long wheelbase of the Gladiator. My wife was a bit nervous, so she used her forward-facing camera for the first time. Cindy, not rattled by much, chose great lines and made it look like a walk in the park. Overall, our trip was a success. With limited pavement time, U-turns only being caused by gates, and no jeeps were damaged. No trees were harmed, no drones were crashed, and the bug spray worked. My name is Shannon. Thanks for watching. This is Warthog Overland.